what no uh, no realization of their interest whatsoever is of good intention. If you think that a country going into another continent, taking them of all their resources and leaving their people in destitution is a good intention, and if you think that countries going into a conflicting region where people are dying by the hundreds of millions every single day and doing arms trade, selling them weapons to kill more people is a good intention, and if you think that they are placing sanctions on other countries which are hugely in need of aid right now is a good intention, then you support them. These are not good intentions. These are bad intentions. They are going in there doing horrible things, and they need to take responsibility for them. And then they respond to how um, so you don't need to, uh, they say how open wars will cause even worse. However, we remember that again, we don't need to support open wars in this debate. The only thing we're saying is that restrictions are impermissible. And then they say how there are a lot of things about, for example, cultural difference and how that responds to our human rights argument. However, we would like to state that Judge we have provided evidence before stating how actually, as more immigrants come in, as more refugees come into the country, cultural assimilation becomes easier. People start to accept the refugees. They start to see that they are actually not as horrible people as other people think. And so for the uh, response of the Bible, we would recommend that we still stand and start the original for the world. Uh, for the past, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> assimilation is happening in development status quo, right? So how do you explain, like, given, even, like, even if these people accept these refugees and cultural assimilation works, why are these right-wing populist parties suddenly gain power if, if, the, if, the, if the public okay. thinks that cultural assimilation is working? So, you want me to oh. All right, so there's two things. Number one, um, right-wing parties are surging in places like Germany, yeah. and these countries are taking far more refugees than they would actually have okay. to. So, what, what essentially I'm saying, in Germany what happened, okay. Chancellor Merkel is a left wing, however right wing populist party is when they see refugees coming in, they assume power because the local people support right wing populists because they see the right. harms so done by them. That's not going to be the case in the long term. We can provide them evidence saying that how if cultural assimilation is actually going to be easier and support for right wing politics will actually decrease. Okay, then how do you explain that people still live in separate communities in the United States of America? Like there are well, Chinese 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 Chinese. If you were to let, if you were to say we had to support the borders, even if that was the case, in the long term it would still be beneficial. Yeah, in the long term, these Indian, yeah. these Chinese people have settled there for hundreds of years, yet yeah, they're still in the separate communities. Wait, also in the long term. Okay, first of all, cultural assimilation only refers, like according to you, cultural assimilation is only a problem when there's tension between cultures. About this, like Indian, China town, there's no. We say this tension is not solvable. That's a proof of the existence okay, so of tension because tension? they don't live in the same community. Living in a different community due to um, maybe because they're more traditional or due to like religion is not a tension. It's just a trend. Okay. okay so, 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 so you never provided evidence that Chinatown and India, whatever you call them, are tension. And second okay. of all, these are not tension. We are trying to argue that you guys just. You have a question. Yes, we do have a question. So, so uh, you talk about how, um, wait, so your alternative plan, you talk about that. So can you tell us, um, how would you respond to saying that in those places, refugees are actually being abused and they're being used in, like, for example, those camps? So, okay. So First of all, they don't settle in camps. In developing countries, they get jobs. They don't just settle in camps. Yes, that's, We're talking that's something about called a, your example, for example, of Jordan, that is a place called a special economic zone for refugees. Actually, and those places, yes, it is. Yes, the evidence may not say so, but that's what it is. That's the special place where refugees can get more jobs. It's, okay, now how is that abusive? Like, like, at least in developing countries. Give me the evidence. If you want me to read it again, I could. You can, you can state that to find a focus, but essentially what I'm arguing is that there are status quo existing in developing countries where they have plans to settle refugees and providing all the aids. Essentially why it's more cost effective is that they don't need to spend the money and also we don't risk all these refugees to go such a long way to travel to America and to, is, to face all the prosecutions. The point is the status quo you're providing with us now is very relevant to our sector. How much time do I have left?
Uh, judges ready? Opponents ready? Two minutes starting now. For the sake of refugees, developed countries and developing countries, we say refugee restrictions are permissible. So we offer an interpretation of restriction as qualitative or quantitative restrictions, which they never responded. So at least we say developed countries at least have the chance to see who is coming into our community. All these venues are important. So if they say they don't defend, they don't need to defend a zero, a zero border. However, what we are essentially saying, if they, any trace of keeping any border concedes that they are permissible, because impermissible implies there has to be zero restriction. They never responded to this argument. They simply, they simply just repeat they, have the, they don't have the burden. However, they provide no counter-interpretation to this point. So essentially, there are two worlds. Let's compare the worlds. And first voting issue is right wing populism. If under, under their world, which developed countries accept these refugees, they allow these right-wing populist parties to stay in power, even if they say the right-wing populist party have existed for hundreds of years for a long time. However, it's exactly this refugee crisis that causes the right-wing populist party to stay in power, and even if they allow more refugees to go in, this will exacerbate the problem. Why is that the impact? Because right-wing populist parties tend to focus on protectionist measures. What are protectionist measures? They reject the impact <coughs> of foreign goods, and more, and cheaper foreign goods, and they reject, uh, they, they reject labor, they don't want these things to fill their voice. Essentially, the impact is first economic recession because of the downturn wage effect is 67.4% of a downturn wage, which, which argument they never responded and caused economic recession. And second, the, the goods and services will be more expensive because they reject the imported goods. That's what the working populist party do. They never responded to this point because the standard of living in developed countries and for refugees will decrease. What essentially in our world, we have refugees in developing countries as well without facing such discrimination. And also, even if they say, that these developed countries have the responsibility. Yes, we can see they did do a lot of bad stuff to developing countries. However, what essentially saying we are taking responsibilities by funding by funding all the existing plans right now under status quo in developing countries to help these refugees to get jobs and get education and don't face prosecution in developed countries, human rights abuses, and that's what we strongly call the Earth program. So, we'll use the rest of our Not 
about, care about, are there humans who are sharing this planet? Well, we don't think it's right, and I don't think anyone in this world will think this is right. And thus, we negate the risk of